This video contains solutions to practice problems from section 5.5 on alternating series. These first few questions have us practicing using the alternating series test to figure out whether these alternating series converge. So there's two things that we need to show to show that a series converges using the alternating series test. We have to show that if we get rid of the alternating sign, that the resulting series, that so the resulting sequence, I should say, is decreasing and converges to zero. So what we're saying here is that we can think of this expression. Remember that that minus one to the n plus one, that's just creating the alternating sign. So we can kind of separate that out and think of these numbers, the one over e to the n, and we wanna show that those numbers are a decreasing sequence that converge to zero. So there's not really a lot to do here. First thing to show that it's decreasing, we need to compare one over e to the n plus one to one over e to the n. Now this number, e to the n plus one, this is a larger number, which means this fraction on the left has a larger denominator because we're raising e to a, a power that's one higher. That means it's gonna give us a bigger result. And that means that it's a smaller fraction. So that shows decreasing. What about converging to zero? Well, there we're thinking about the limit as n goes to infinity of one over e to the n. But this number e to the n on the bottom, that's going to go to infinity, which means this limit is going to equal zero. So we got the two things that we need to show. And so by the alternating series test, this series converges. A couple more similar problems. Again, we're gonna separate out the alternating sign and think about just one over the natural log of n. We need to show that these numbers, one over natural log of n, form a decreasing sequence that converge to zero. So first thing we need to do is compare natural log of n plus one to natural log of n. And because natural log of n plus one, if we take the natural log of a larger number, that gives us a larger result, which means this fraction on the left has a larger denominator, which means it's a smaller fraction, which is what we want. Then the other thing we need to show is that the limit as n goes to infinity of one over the natural log of n. We need to show that that goes to zero. But again, as we take natural logs of larger numbers, we get larger results, which means this bottom of this fraction goes to infinity, which means the whole fraction in the limit goes to zero. So again, we get the two things that we need to show that by the alternating series test, this series converges. All right, one more of these. It looks a little bit different because we have a sine function here, but our task is still the same. We need to show that these numbers, sine of one over n, form a decreasing sequence that converges to zero. So for decreasing, we're looking at comparing the numbers sine of one over n plus one to the sine of one over n. Now, similar analysis to what we did in the last couple of problems, we would look at this fraction one over n plus one and think, well, that's a smaller fraction. This is a smaller number, but what about the sine function? Well, there we need to remember what the graph of y equals the sine of x looks like, especially as x is close to zero. So it's gonna look something like this. And so we wanna think on our number line, we've got these two numbers, one over n, and then a little bit to the left of that, one over n plus one. And because sine is an increasing function near x equals zero, when we plug in a smaller number, we're gonna get a smaller result. So we're using the fact that sine is an increasing function near x equals zero. And that tells us that when we plug in a smaller number, we get a smaller result. And that tells us that sine of one over n plus one is gonna be smaller than the sine of one over n. So a little bit more complicated, but same result here. Now, the other thing we need to look at is the limit as n goes to infinity of the sine of one over n. So we know that as n goes to infinity, one over n is going to go to zero. And so that means that since sine is a continuous function, that this limit is going to equal the sine of zero. But the sine of zero is zero. And so again, we get the two things that we need to show that this series converges by the alternating series test. So now for these next few problems, we're looking at series that contain some negative terms. They don't have to be alternating, but they have some negative terms in them. And we wanna understand whether the series conditionally converge, absolutely converge, or diverge. So for any given series, if it has some negative terms, those are the three possibilities that we wanna look at. So the way to start approaching this problem is to first take the absolute value of the terms of your series. So look at a different series, which is what we get when we take the absolute value of these terms. So basically we get rid of all those negative numbers and we make everything positive to help us analyze what's going on. So what that's gonna do is it's going to get rid of the alternating sign. Instead of minus one to the n plus one times n over n plus three, we just get n over n plus three. 
And now we want to look at which tool of all the different series tools that we've developed, which tool do we want to use to attack and understand this new series that we've created. And what you might notice when you look at this is that if you take the limit as n goes to infinity of just these numbers n over n plus 3, when n is a really big number, this is a billion divided by a billion and 3, which is really close to 1. And in fact, this limit is 1. And that series diverges by the divergence test. This series diverges. So when we take the absolute value of the terms of our series and we get something that diverges, that means that our series is not absolutely convergent. Either the original series diverges as well, or the original series converges for some reason. And because the absolute value of the series diverges, that's what we mean when we say conditionally converges. So now let's go back to the original series with what we've learned and try to understand what do we think is going on. Well, our original series looks just like the series we were just looking at, except with an alternating sign. So if the numbers in the absolute value series approach one, then the numbers in this series are going to bounce back and forth between plus and minus one. All that alternating sign is going to do is alternate the sign of the terms. So if the terms themselves are going to one, then the alternating sign is just going to make them be alternating between plus and minus one. So that means that the limit as n goes to infinity of minus one to the n plus one times n over n plus three does not exist. Because as n gets larger and larger and larger, those numbers are going to be approaching alternating plus one and minus one. There's no single number that those numbers approach. So again, the divergence test tells us that the original series diverges because what the divergence test tells us is that if this limit is anything other than zero and does not exist, is not zero, if it's anything other than zero, then our original series has to diverge. So our answer here is that the series diverges. All right, next up. So again, my recommendation for these types of problems is to start by taking the absolute value and see what you get. So we get the sum as m goes from 2 to infinity of the absolute value of minus 1 to the m divided by the square root of m. And what that's going to do is get rid of that alternating sign. So we just get the sum as m goes from 2 to infinity of 1 over the square root of m. So what we should recognize here is that this is a p series with p equaling 1 half. Remember, m square root of m just is the same as m to the 1 half. And because 1 half is less than or equal to 1, this is going to diverge. And so again, what that means is that this series, the original series, is not absolutely convergent. But it could still either diverge itself or be conditionally convergent. So now we go back to the original series and think to ourselves, what can we say about this series? Well, this series has some negative terms in it, right? It's got an alternating sign, which means many of the tools that we've developed don't apply. We can't use a comparison test. We can't use a limit comparison test. We can't use the integral test. None of those tests apply here. And so what we might try to do is use the alternating series test. That test does apply because this is an alternating series. So we want to think to ourselves, all right, what can we say about the sequence one over the square root of m? Is it decreasing? Well, for that, we have to compare 1 over the square root of m plus 1 to 1 over m, 1 over the square root of m. And that is true because the fraction on the left has a larger denominator. Does it converge to 0? Well, the limit as m goes to infinity of 1 over the square root of m is 0. So that works as well. So that means this series converges by the alternating series test. So what do we conclude? When we take the absolute value of the terms of our series, we get a divergent series. But if we leave in the alternating sign, that series converges. That's what we mean when we say conditionally convergent. So this series that we were given is conditionally convergent. All right, last one here. So again, we've got a series with some negative terms with an alternating sign. So we're going to start by taking the absolute value and see what we get.
So we get 2 to the n divided by 3 to the 2n plus 1. And now what do we think about that series? Well, again, hopefully what you recognize is that that series looks like a geometric series, and we can make that similarity even stronger by rewriting it a little bit. We've got a plus 1 in our exponent here on the bottom, so I'm going to separate out a factor of 1 third. And then I have 2 to the n divided by 3 to the 2n. I'm going to think of 3 to the 2n as 3 squared to the n, which is the same as 9 to the n, which means what I have here is 2 ninths to the n power. So now I see that this is a geometric series with r equaling 2 ninths, and 2 ninths is less than 1, so this series converges. And now we're done, because when we take the absolute value of our series and we get something that converges, that means that our series is absolutely convergent. We don't need to now look at the original series with the alternating sign, because by what we've learned about series with some negative terms, when we take the absolute value of all those terms, if that series converges, then the original series had to also converge. So our conclusion here is that our series is absolutely convergent. So I hope this video has helped you understand what to do when you've got some ser series with negative terms or with an alternating sign. We've got the alternating series test, and then we've also got the analysis tools that we've done before by taking the absolute value of the terms of our series.